Full and Rich Whisky. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a, a marketing bottle here on my cask. It's called Mugleflugger or Mugleflugger or whatever. Here's the writing on the label. No idea how to pronounce. And this Mugleflugger is the most northern island of the Shetland Islands in Scotland. And uh, it's not the very northern part of uh, the Shetlands. There is a riff out stack, it's called, a very small one. Uh, and somewhere there is also a lighthouse. And close to this lighthouse, this whiskey matured. And on the label it said, Magle Flogger overwintered in Shetland single malt scotch whiskey produce of Scotland. And on the small label below it reads single malt whiskey from Speyside. So they moved the cask from Speyside to the lighthouse of Maglaflaga and close by they, well, they overwintered the cask to have all the seasons work on those casks. Limited edition Cask number C012, bottle number 0596. So this was a sherry butt and it's only 40% ABV. And on the back it says, aged in first use sherry oak casks, is then shipped to mature for a further 12 months in the remote Shetland Islands near the Magle Flagga lighthouse. Here it undergoes every type of climate, gales, salt spray and summer sun. What emerges is a unique drum, rich and full of fruit, all roughness smoothed away. The pure, pristine, pristine essence of a distinguished malt whiskey. Yeah, so I find this, this bottle rested on the shelf in my office for a month. And I always said, well, this Magleflagger sounds weird uh, and this bottle looks so wonderful and uh, I have to taste that sometime. And uh, so now I have the chance to taste it. And um, there's always the question, where does this whiskey come from? It comes from, well, this whiskey comes from the space side and that's all. So this is a single malt. This means from a single distillery. But the next one, which isn't matured in the cask C012, might be from a different distillery. So it's if you have a brand name which is not equal to the distillery name, then uh, the supplying distillery might change over the years. Whatever contracts are signed between the bottler and the distillery to say, well, this brand always comes from the distillery XYZ. No, that's not, not really always true. It might come from for some years from that distillery, but later on, or in previous times, it might have come from another distillery. Because there is another brand name on it and the distillery is not mentioned, uh, the source may change. And that somebody in former times said, well, this tastes like bull. It must come from this and that distillery. Uh, and then it moves on. Everybody telling us, this is from that distillery. This is from that. No, there's no distillery named on that bottle. And you can't tell where, from which distillery this whiskey comes from. <clears throat> Full and rich whiskey with a very faint smokiness. Very interesting. 
So it's more complex than the normal whiskies without this very distant, faint, smoky note. And typically, to be honest, the place where whiskey matures is not that important. If you have the air moving over the islands and then 20 minutes later it moves over the warehouses on the mainland, then neither the humidity nor the ingredients nor the temperature of the air moving to the warehouses has changed. So maturation is always the same wherever you are. There are only the differences in temperature. If you are up in the mountains where the temperatures are not that close to the shoreline where temperatures are more stable, more constant than uh, in the highlands, then the whiskey matures differently because um, the heating of the cask presses the air out and if it cools it sucks in the new air and then oxidization takes place and so on and so on. <clears throat> and on the Shetland Islands there's really a rough climate and in summer, I've been there in summer in 2004 and it was quite hot. So you have those uh, icy winds in winter and these probably drier and hot summers up to 20 degrees centigrade or 23 degrees centigrade. Um, then the casks work and if you're in a more uh, well protected environment where the temperatures do not move that fast or that differently then uh, the maturation will be less. Um, and uh, the spray, the salty spray from the sea uh, covers the casks and then uh, the water vapor from the air goes through these uh, salt crystals and brings the salt into the cask but mm, I'm not quite sure how the membrane function of the staves of the casks work and if they let uh, the the ions or the crystals uh, through into the whiskey. Mm. Um, so there might be some differences in location but they do not have to be that high. The taste is pleasant, smooth, very faint smokiness, a little fruitiness coming through. Probably the fruitiness is, is sherry fruitiness. Yeah, some vanilla, some caramel showing up. The taste is intense, despite the 40% ABV. Really intense. So the sherry butt shows the oak, shows intensity, brings spiciness, covering your mouth. The aftertaste is long, really long. And how old is this whiskey? Well, it's distilled, very good, so there's no youthness no metallic note in it. It's matured, yes. Um, how old? Well, there's not this huge complexity the very old whiskies have. And for a first filled sherry cast, the whiskey is quite light. So you can have this in, in three years time. So two years uh, in the space side and another year, 12 months for the finishing. No, finishing is the wrong word for the relocation of the cask. Finishing means you take the whiskey out of the cask and put in another one for finishing. This is the huge, the whole cask was relocated to, Sh to Shetland. So this is a wonderful sipping whiskey, not too complex, but everything is there. The aroma is good, even for the 40% ABV. Uh, full fruity, a little sherry in it, Oh, this is a good one and it's priced slightly above 40 and uh, the, the bottle is wonderful. This is a whiskey you typically want to, to present over 
as a gift and say, well, it's a wonderful whiskey to somebody who does not know whiskey. <laughs> and if he knows whiskey and he reads this Maglerflaga, no idea where it comes from. Uh, I first thought it would be a Highland Park because of this light smokiness or a spring bank. But it reads on the label from Speyside. Who knows? And the cast number is CO12, CO12. Probably it might be from the year 2012. And now it's 2016. So there's three years time to mature. Hmm. Probably it's just accounting and not really a cask number, uh, a year number. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned and feel free to discuss this bottle with me in our forum, which is already growing and Every day several new questions arise and I'm happy to give you answers.